Welcome to Our Lady Lourdes Parish in Massapequa Park, New York. I'm Monsignor Jim Lasanti, and together we are praying the 29th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, the Lord be with you. As always, we start Mass by looking into our souls, examining our lives during the past week, and asking God for his mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. And so we pray. Let us pray for the gift of simplicity and the gift of joy, as we give loving service to God and mankind. Almighty and ever-living God, our source of power and inspiration, Please give us strength and joy in serving you as true followers of Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his anointed Cyrus, whose right hand I grasp, subduing nations before him, and making kings run in his service, opening doors before him and leaving the gates unbarred. For the sake of my Jacob, my servant, of Israel, of my chosen one, I have called you by your name, giving you a title, though you knew me not. I am the Lord, and there is no other. There is no God besides me. It is I who arm you, though you know me not, so that toward the rising and the setting of the sun, people may know that there is none besides me. I am the Lord, there is no other. The word of the Lord. Give 
the peoples with equity. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Paul, Savannah, and Timothy to the Church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you, remembering you in our prayers, unceasingly calling to mind your work of faith and labor of love, and endurance in hope of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before our God and Father, knowing, brothers and sisters loved by God, how you were chosen. For our gospel did not come to you in word alone, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with much conviction. The word of the Lord. Friends, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. The Pharisees went off and plotted how they might entrap Jesus in speech. They sent their disciples to him with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are a truthful man, and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth, and you are not concerned with anyone's opinion, for you do not regard a person's status. Tell us then. What is your opinion? Is it lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not? Knowing their malice, Jesus said, Why are you testing me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin that pays the census tax. Then they handed him the Roman coin. And he said to them, Whose image is this and whose inscription? And they replied, Caesar's. And that he said to them, at that he said to them, Then repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God, what belongs to God. And this is the gospel of our Lord. Praise Amen. the Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks for being with us on this 29th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Before I get into the readings, just uh, important that you know that throughout all of our Masses, we're praying for peace and an end to the tragic goings-on in, in the Holy Land, praying for both Jews and uh, Palestinians and Christians and many other people of that area, that there be an end to the violence, an end to the terror, uh, no doubt about it, the horror uh, that took place when Hamas attacked people in Israel is to be condemned, absolutely, uh, not terribly different from what took place when the Japanese uh, attacked us at Pearl Harbor, uh, not very different from what happened on 9-11 when thousands of innocent people died. It's always wrong, acts of terror, and they should be called acts of terror. But we're also compelled to try to work for peace and mutual respect and understanding between all peoples, that if we keep on going, as the Bible says, you know, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, where are we going to end up but in a world that's blind and toothless, 
So let's pray for peace as well as for the consolation of those who have been the victims of terror and for an end to terror in whatever form it takes. Uh, I mentioned to you praying for Christians. One of the letters I received today from a wonderful organization called Aid to the Church in Need reminded us that for our Christian religious partners, many of them are now trapped in the war zone. Please know that we are in daily contact. Approximately 51,000 Christians live in Gaza and on the West Bank. So when we talk about people, we can sometimes we Christians believe that it's just between Muslims and Jews, but our own people, our own uh, co-religionists are very much involved in this as well. We need to pray powerfully for peace to reign, for justice to reign, for an end to terror and violence. Okay, let's go to the readings now. Let's start with that Old Testament reading from the book of Isaiah. There's two things I want to focus on in particular. I have called you by your name. What God's trying to communicate through Isaiah there is that it's really personal with God. We are not some amorphous humanity, you know, uh, lots of little people that he puts on earth to run around like ants on an anthill. We are meant to be here individually, uniquely. Look, I've said to you many times before, if God wanted to make us all the same, to make us quick, cookie cutter, he could have done that. There's a reason every single one of us looks different, acts differently, is made differently. There's a difference in the whole world that if you took a fingerprint of every one of us, every fingerprint is different. Because God meant for us to be aware that he made us one at a time, that he loves us one at a time, that we are individually important to him, personally important to him, intimately important to him. I'll give you an example of what I mean. You know, when I get emails and messages and they, they address me as Dear James, I know right away it's not from a friend or family. Nobody calls me James. Maybe the nuns back in grammar school when I was in trouble. But by and large, if you know me, I'm Jim. I would always be Jim from the beginning of my life. If you're family, I'm Jimmy. Nobody calls me James. That's the way God talks to you and me, intimately, personally. He knows the name you're called because he gave you the identity you have. That's how close, that's how intimate he is to us. Uh, maybe another way to explain it, and I like this idea very much, is that I ask parents all the time, you know, you have this bunch of kids in your family. Who do you love the best? And parents will inevitably say, I love them all differently, but equally. And I say, how is that possible? But of course it's possible. God does it himself. He loves us all equally and individually, just like you parents every single day. Your children may be as different as could be, one from another. They all come from the same source, and yet look at them, how wonderfully, uniquely, differently they're made. And you wonderfully, uniquely, Find the space in your heart to love them one at a time. Well, so does God. That's one of the points of the readings. The other thing I love about this reading is, I am the Lord, there is no other. I am the Lord and there is no other. I think what God is trying to say to us, I've heard this a few times from athletes that I've interviewed. A lot of professional athletes will say, you got to start with God first, family second. And I know that's hard for all of us because most of us, if we're asked, will say, well, of course, my family's at the center of my life. But what they're saying to me, these people I interview, is that if you get it right with God, everything else will make sense. And that's really what we're hearing in this reading, too, to make God number one. And we don't, do we? We make our, our house, our car, our money, our employment, our family. We put lots of things, our, our enjoyment of food and drink and good times. We make those things. And then we add on God. You know, I do my time. I do my hour at Mass. I, I do have God in my life, but he's not really, if I'm honest, my number one priority. And yet Isaiah is saying for us to find peace in our lives. It's got to begin with him. And it makes sense. If you get it right with the Lord of the universe... You're going to be very well equipped to deal with family problems and societal problems and work problems and school problems. It all begins with him. And I know it's not easy, but we're all called on to say, can I make a list of my priorities and can I come to say, number one, absolutely, is that I have a great relationship with my Lord and God who is, at the end of the day, someone who reigns supreme over every other aspect of my life. So he can't be an add-on. He can't be an addition. He can't be a byproduct. He's got to be at the center of who and what we are. And if we do that, everything else right will follow. Okay, let's go to that second reading from St. Paul to the Thessalonians. You know, St. Paul's great because he can, in a very short paragraph, you just heard the reading, it's not very long, but he can almost tell us how to live our lives in just a few words. This is how he greets the people who are our fellow believers. And I'm thinking to myself, apply this to your life and mine. If you and I 
approached every person that we meet on any given day this way. First of all, willing to say that I wish you grace and peace. When you meet people, is that the first thing that comes into your mind? I want to wish you grace and peace. Can you imagine if we approached everybody, the guy who cuts us off in the car, the guy who's rude to us in the store, the guy who cuts in line in front of us. If every person we met, we begin with the greeting, I wish you grace, I wish you peace. How much calmer and more peaceful a world we would have. That's how Paul begins his letter. And then he goes on to say, we give thanks for you to God. Let's be honest. You may give thanks for the people in your family. You may give thanks to people who are your close personal friends. Can you say to every Christian believer that you run into in church, I thank God for your life every day? Imagine again how great a world it would be if the Israeli Jewish people could say to the people in Gaza, I wish you God's peace. I absolutely begin by giving thanks to God for the gift of your life. And conversely, if everyone who calls themselves Muslim and loves God was willing to say to every Jew, I am so thankful to God that he thought to create you. Can you imagine the world we would live in? How about Mr. Putin, who claims to be a devout Christian, if he could say to the Ukrainians, I thank God for the gift of your life, because if he meant it, he wouldn't willy-nilly be killing innocent people in Ukraine, would he? Wouldn't it be great if the Ukrainians in time can say to Putin and the Russians, I thank God for the gift of your life. You see, we don't, do we? But St. Paul did. He began when he greeted the people that he was writing to by saying, I thank God for you and for his creation of you and for your presence in the world. And if that was our approach to every person, whether we consider them friend or enemy, we really wouldn't have many enemies, would we? We wouldn't have a world so divided, so violent, so hurting right now. And there's just one more thing I wanted to focus on that St. Paul says, you were chosen. You know, I hope you're watching that TV series, The, the Chosen. It's the best thing on television. It's the best thing in media about the life of Christ, but it's not really just about the life of Christ. People sometimes think it's called The Chosen because they're talking about the fact that Jesus was chosen to be the Messiah. It's, it's not. So much of that series is about those who followed him their perfections and imperfections, their humanity, their sinfulness. And by choosing them, broken, sinful, incomplete, foolish people, people with a terrible background in many cases, major sinners, when he chooses them, he's saying, look, I know how human you are. I know how sinful you are. I know it all about you. I still love and choose you to be my own. You are chosen, we're told by St. Paul. Well, yeah, he may be chosen, but he didn't know how, how much darkness I was capable of. Yes, he does. He's God. He knows it all. He knows the inner workings of your soul and mine. He knows the worst of us. And he calls forth the best of us. You are chosen, as were the apostles and disciples, to be his own. And just as you'll find out if you watch the series, they are deeply, awfully imperfect people. So are you. So am I. And yet he chooses and loves us always and forever, no matter what. And finally, to this gospel, the great challenge of this gospel, you know, this is all about how much do you owe the state, how much do you owe God? So, you know, the, the purpose of the, uh, of the Pharisees is not a good one. Let's trap Jesus so we can get him in trouble with the authorities. Maybe he'll say we're not supposed to pay Caesar the tax, and then we'll get in touch with the Romans and let them know that Jesus is against the government of Caesar. Well, Jesus is cleverer by far than these people trying to untrap him. But the issue he raises is a good one. Give to Caesar what is Caesar's. Give to God what is God's. Dorothy Day, the wonderful woman who, God willing, will someday be declared a saint of the church, who worked so much of her life for the poor, who was a convert to Catholicism, has a popular phrase. She says, uh, while Jesus is right, she said, but when you give to God, what's God's? There isn't much left for Caesar. And she called on us to examine, always to be careful. Yes, we have an obligation to support our government, especially in a place like America where we are so bountifully blessed, but also to make sure that the government doesn't forget to take care of the needful, the poor, the broken, to make sure that God's concerns are also met. So, for instance, we have a, a strong social network, not just in America, but throughout Western Europe and much of the world, 
to help the poor, the broken, those who have lost their jobs, those who are disabled, those who have nothing going for them, that the government should be there as a safety net for them. But our government doesn't just do nice things for people who are broken and poor. It sometimes uses your money and mine, your tax dollars and mine, in ways that we might never, ever want to embrace. In Dorothy Day's case, in specific terms, she said, how do you justify trillions of dollars spent on weapons of destruction? How do you support a government that uh, goes to war far too often and too many lives that are lost? That's a, a genuine concern. My own concern would be even more local. In a state like New York or places like California, certainly social services provide for a lot of good things. But they also, through Medicaid funding in New York State, my tax dollars and yours help to pay for over 50,000 children to be aborted every year. It doesn't matter if you like abortion or not, you're a taxpayer, you're involved. And so Dorothy Day, and specifically Jesus in this gospel, are raising very important issues. Yes, we've got to support Caesar government. They do many good things. But also we've got to be people who are activist citizens who say, hold on a second. As long as you're using the money that I pay for good purpose, moral purpose, I'm with you. But I'm also mindful of the fact that sometimes you use my money in ways that are unjust, that are illegitimate, that are wrong, sinful. So what are we supposed to do? Speak up. You know, uh, I'm sometimes accused of being a very political priest, and I am. I know all the congressmen on Long Island. I know the senators, and they hear from me, whether it's an email, a letter form, or in person. No one has to wonder, what does Lasanti think? These people make decisions about how your tax dollars and mine are spent. And when they spend them for good cause, I say, bravo. When they spend them badly in things we consider to be fundamentally immoral, then we're called on to challenge them and to let them hear our voice and not to just shake our heads and say, what a shame. We're called on to be better than that. Jesus in this gospel is very clever, but he's also very moral. Yeah, when government does good, you support government. Give to Caesar what he needs to do the good, but be mindful of the less good and challenge Caesar when he's wrong. And in the meantime, give to God's what's God's. And here I would end with a challenge to all of us who call ourselves Christian. You know, I know what I pay in taxes, and it's a lot, and you do too. But I think to myself, I need once in a while to take a look at my tax bill and then compare it to what I spend on charity and see whether or not they match. See, I like being an American. I like all the wonderful things that come with being an American, so I pay my taxes. But I also know that it's not just up to the government to do the good. It's up to you and me individually. And that means to take a look at what we give, not just to Caesar, but to God. And to take what we give to God seriously and to rise to the occasion of our vocation, our call from God, to be mindful not only of supporting the government, but of personally being generous to others. Take a look at the end of the year as I try to, at what I spent on me, myself, and I, and what I spent on those who have far less. And if what I spent on me is far greater than what I spend on the needful, I've got some uh, work to do to make things more equitable, more fair, more aware that Jesus says, who is my brother and sister? Who are the poor? Who are the broken? Insofar as you took care of them, you took care of me. As a people of faith, let's pray together the words of our creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Holy Spirit, Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who together with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. 
now with trust and confidence in the goodness of God, let's offer our prayers and petition. For the protection and safety of those who protect and defend our nation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a renewed commitment of the world's leaders to peace and justice for all God's children, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God's people may be active in carrying out their civic responsibilities and may choose leaders who will build a society that respects all human life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those in our parish and family members who are ill may enjoy the consolation of the Lord and the presence of their loved ones, especially baby Mia Skates, Patricia Valdaro, Myrene Burleson, Ava Sigler, Bernard Henley, Patricia Carbone, Joseph LaRocco, Teresa Dorer, Eileen Donahue. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Brian R. Fitzpatrick Jr., Dorothy Spillane, Louis Cazetto, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the intention of this Mass, Vincent J. Bove, Vincent Daniels, Barbara Cardinale, Anthony Valentine, Frank Leskoskis, Cecilia Lasanti, Gaspar and Jeanette Ingui, Betty Barbara Dettori. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our uh, among those who are sick and in need of our healing prayer, we pray for Judge Tony Falenga, baby Mia Scatz, for Joanne Cavaccini, uh, we pray too for Tim Moore, Kimberly Cusack, Christine Bauman, Michael Chanover, Jeanette Chanover-Davidson, Carol Silva, Nelwyn Randisi, Joe Falgiano, Anthony Kremi, Kathy Bordingo. We pray for um, Ginny Rivera, as well as Courtney Genovese. I pray for Jose E. Center, Jimmy Collins. I pray as well for uh, Tom Sedita. Let me pray for Annette Romance, Baby Oakley, uh, Justin Doherty, Marion Pat Sears, Dario Rivera, Anthony Posterino, Carol Paolo Ashandi, members of the Paratine family. I pray for Angelo and Al Clementi, for Leanne Lasanti, for Katie O'Connor, for Judy Alaco, let me pray too for Jimmy Lay as a prisoner of conscience and for his years in prison suffering for democracy. I pray for Larry Lewis and for, Millie, and for Patricia Stewart and for Ursula Bobas. I pray for Connie Vanis, for Maria Cariola and all the members of the McShay family. Among those who are sick, I also pray for Teresa Leo Fisher, for Larry Meyer, for Joseph Graffeo. Let me pray for uh, Vilio Bronzini, for Anne Di Stefano. I pray for all those who are suffering mental illness of any kind. Let me pray too for Courtney Desjardins, for Tommy Swingross, Mary and Ken Johnson. I pray for Patrick Cuccius and for Elizabeth Carter. For Martin Soval, I pray too for Sam and Beverly Maggio, for Janet Chevelle, for Russell Castro Giovanni, for uh, Donna Ellis, I pray for retired Major Resty Mallory, as well as Michelle Spinelli. Pray for Ray McGrath, Brian and Kathy Rogers, Karen Guadagno, Valerie Barchenkis. Let me pray for Annette Salintro, as well as Susie and Vinny Vignardi. I pray for Margaret Ann Steiser, for Rose Madonna. I pray too among the sick for Glenn Mankin, for Frank Matassa, for my friend Kathy, uh, I want to pray too for Father Bob Lebrano, for Christian Hernandez and his safety. I pray too for Rosemary and her health challenges, for Dina Cellini Clancy, for my classmate and friend Tommy Burke. Let me pray for Bill and Fran, the parents of Martha Formato, for Jack and uh, all those who are in irreconcilable families and for their peace, for Lisa Schwartz and for uh, Michael Chanover. Let me pray too for Jeanette Davidson, for Chuck, Kathy, and Stacy Meesh. I pray too for Kathy Bordengo, for Wayne Steinbrenner, 
Marianne and Stephen Orlando, or the Orlando, Drago, Moriarty, and LaFaso families, the Bill and Joan Donovan. I pray too for Dominic Lettieri, as well as Baby Bresden, born on September 29th, heart surgery on September 30th, praying for Baby Bresden. And just among the sick, let me mention too, all the members of Ann Scott's family. And I have been praying apparently for Rosalie Seiko, uh, who's from Endwell, New York, mistakenly praying for her on the list of those who have died. And Rosalie was in touch to let me know that while she appreciates prayers for her illness, she's not dead. She's very much living. So I'd like to say our prayers brought her back from the dead, but I want to remember her as well. And then let's talk about those who have died and pray for them. I want to pray for uh, Corinne Caracciolo. I pray for Cecilia Nicholas Lasanti. I pray for Dominic Macchio, Luigi Antonio Rosmini, Gemma Stumper Rosmini, Mike Goff. I pray for Steve O'Mara, for Regina Brighton, for Cardinal George Pell, John Slade. I pray for Kristen Sedita Duggan. I pray for Elaine Sedita, my good friend who passed away recently. I pray for Tom O'Sullivan, Bessie and T.C. Senna, all the deceased members of the Vignardi family, for Bartolomeo Beni. I pray for Guy, Gaetano, Salvatore, and Angelo Emolo. I pray for Anna and Gary Gomes, Albert Covelli, Paul Struzzieri, Emilio Alaco. I pray for Joseph Sardone. I pray for uh, Thomas Di Crescenzo, Helen, Luke, and John Marr, Pat and George Layton, Betty Ammon, Ursula, Jack, and Paul Cronin, Kay and Mike Lynch, Doris and Hank Erickson, Paul Lowell, I pray for Robert J. McCarthy and Joan Kretz. I pray too for Sophia Maglione, for Phyllis Petrowski, Kenneth and Marie Taylor. Let me pray too for Judge Don Belfi and Nicholas Marini, Thomas Peter Lopresti and Pat Sistar. For Jean-Claude Lenay, Paul Romeo, Ed Wrights, Judy Famono, uh, Mary and John Coyne. I pray for Doug Julik, Chris and Marion O'Brien. I pray for Dennis Francis Cooney. I pray for Joe Cooney. Pray for Stanley Krupski. For Jack Carroll and Dave Robin. Christina Formato and Marion O'Brien. Billy and Michael Sarasoli. Mary and Joseph William. Kathy Orofino. Margaret, uh, Margaret O'Connor Lasanti. I pray for uh, Kenny Bolando, John, Maureen, Ann, Ed, and Mary Raber, as well as Peter Raber. Monica and Ray Carrison. Richard Rosmarin, Jimmy Soldo, uh, Peter Raber, Carmela Labolita, Cynthia Prague, Elaine Tiso, Matthew Toriello, Joseph Sardone, and Bessie Sena. For Bill Kelly and Isabel and John Glauda. For Danny Carlson, Pauline, Irene, and Tom Romano. Ed June and Eddie Jandovitz. Father Don Babinski, Father Ken Marks. I pray for um, Anthony Cip Cipriano for Marie Sicolo and Terry Moran. I pray too for uh, Gerard Granito, Marie and Albert Cavelli, uh, Peggy and Richard DeMarco. Pray for Corinne Locke and Steve Haller, Melissa Bergman and Nicholas Martone. For John Bonifacio and Jerry Monk and Jimmy Collins, Jean and Nicholas Delario, Colin and Tommy Ryan, Nancy Palumbo, Catherine Cheney. For John Slade and Mary Rockensees. For Helen Kiddash, and Richard Maglione, I pray as well for Al Menendez. Among those who have died, I remember William Anthony Bruchweiler, for Teresa Di Palmo, also known as Tessie. I pray for Annette Cilintro and Charles McLaughlin, Jean Hersick, Leonardo Playa, Donato Forlenza, Mary and Donato Forlenza, Nicole Toussaint. I pray for Nana Scaglione, for Emily LaFaso, Melissa Bergman, Bridget Clementi. I pray for Ray Anzalone and Brian Hussey and Susan Scanio, his lovely daughter. For Susan Mulligan, for Betty Moore. I pray too for Tom O'Sullivan, Father Don Babinski, Father Ken Marks, Father Joe Lukaszewski, Father Ken Winkler, Father Tim Hurton. Pray too for Jenna Tuller, Bob Mason. I want to pray for Catherine and William Donovan, for Elizabeth, that is Beth Kelly, Judith Crum, Barbara Turley, Christine Tomeo. Doris Raniola, as well as her son James. I pray for Chris Baumler, and for John and Isabella Glauda, for Beatrice Ferrari, for Gina Pelletier, as well as uh, Rosemary Yuli and Chuck Kalinowski.
Let me add some special intentions if I can. In addition to those I mentioned, I want to pray for some sick who are very much in need of our prayers. I ask you to pray for Bill Torrio. Bill has been a faithful watcher of our Mass for a long time online. He's battling cancer right now, and Bill, we're praying for you and for your well-being. I want to pray for my friend Joe, who's also got some cancer concerns. I pray for Chris Walker, who's just undergone uh, brain surgery. Pray for Leo Von Elm and his well-being. My friend Joe Falgiano uh, got some challenging news for his health, and we pray for him and for his family. I pray for Judge Tony Falanga and Kathy Bordengo and Tommy Burke. I want to pray, too, for several people who have died, and I want to remember them, especially John Simone on his two-year anniversary, Gaetano Emolo on his 50th birthday spent in heaven, on Cheryl Julick, who passed away last week. I pray for Suzanne Scanio on her anniversary, and Gina Pelletieri. Pray for Beatrice Ferrari, as well as for Martin Saval, and for Mary Rockensees, and Millie Paradiso. Uh, let me pray, too, for peace in the Holy Land, peace among all people of all races, all religions, for an end to violence and terror, for people willing to see that every one of us is made in the image of God, that there is one God in heaven who wants us to live in love. I pray for our friends in Ukraine and their well-being. I pray for an end to the violence perpetuated against them. I pray, too, for the freedom of the people of Taiwan and Hong Kong and Western China. I pray, too, for all of our police and firefighters and EMTs, our first responders. I pray for our men and women in the armed forces. I pray, too, for an end to every kind of prejudice and bigotry throughout the world against people, no matter what their differences. I pray, too, for doctors and nurses and orderlies and all those people trying to keep us healthy. And I pray for your special intentions in mind. And we turn them all over to the Mother of God as together we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from all of my sin. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice will be found acceptable to God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands to the praise and the glory of his name for our good and the good of all his church. Lord God, may the gifts we offer bring us your love and forgiveness. May they give us freedom to serve you with all our lives. And we ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father in heaven, it is right that we should give you thanks and glory. You are the one God, living and true. Through all eternity you live in unapproachable light. You are the source of life and goodness. You have created all things and all people to fill your creatures with every blessing and to lead all people to the joyful vision of your divine light. Countless hosts of angels stand before you to do your will. They look upon your splendor and they praise you night and day. United with them and in the name of every creature under heaven, we too praise your glory as together we sing. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Father, we acknowledge your greatness in all your actions. Show your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own likeness, and you set us over the whole world to serve you, our creator, and to rule over all creatures. And even when we disobeyed you and lost your friendship, you did not abandon us to the power of death, but helped all people to seek and to find you. Again and again, you offered a covenant to us, and through the prophets, taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you so loved the world that in the fullness of time, you sent your only son to be our savior. He was conceived through the power of the Blessed Virgin Mary, a man like us in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to those in sorrow joy. In fulfillment of your will he gave himself up to death, but by rising from the dead he destroyed death and restored life, and that we might live no longer for ourselves but for him. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as his first gift to those who believe, to complete his work on earth and to bring us the fullness of grace. Father, may this same Holy Spirit now bless and sanctify these offerings. Let them become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. He always loved those who were his own in the world. When the time came for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, he showed the depth of that love. While they were at supper, Jesus took bread he blessed the bread and broke it. He gave it to his friends, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, Jesus took a chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, Again, Father, he thanked you for your goodness, gave the chalice to his disciples and friends and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption. We recall Christ's death, his descent among the dead, his resurrection, and his ascension to your right hand. And looking forward to his coming again in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the acceptable sacrifice which brings salvation to the whole world. Lord, look upon this sacrifice which you've given to your church, and by your Holy Spirit, gather all who share this one bread and one cup into the one body of Christ, a living sacrifice of praise. Lord, remember those for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, along with all the bishops, the clergy, the religious, and all of God's people. Remember those who take part in this offering, those here present, and all your people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember those who have died in the peace of Christ, and all the dead whose faith is known to you alone. Father, in your mercy, grant also to us, your children, to enter into our heavenly inheritance in the company of Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her devoted spouse, and with all the saints and angels and apostles. And then in your kingdom, freed from the corruption of sin and death, we shall sing your glory with every creature through Christ our Lord, through whom you give us everything that is good. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Amen.
for an end to all war, for an end to all violence, for us to finally recognize we're equally children of the same God, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you my peace, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live and reign. One God forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, with faith in your love and mercy, we eat your body and drink your blood. Let it not bring us condemnation, but health in mind and in body. My friends, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to share in everlasting life. our spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Just a few announcements now, if I can. One is that we have a couple of great adult education opportunities in the parish, and I'd like to invite you to think about them. If you live on Long Island, please to join us, and if not, just be watching online. Hopefully, we'll post some of the uh, good stuff. This coming Tuesday, right after the uh, morning mass, Father Andy will be giving a, a background, an overview of the history of the conflicts in the Holy Land, where people are coming from. We want to better understand what's going on in our world today. And uh, with this great crisis before us, he'll help us to understand uh, what's going on in the Holy Land, where it comes from, what's the background of this particular conflict. So that's after Mass on Tuesday, uh, Father Andy will be with us. And then on Wednesday, after the Mass, right after the Rosary, Father Anthony will be spending every week meeting with people who want to meet to talk over the readings for the upcoming Sunday. 
what do they mean? What do they mean to us personally? What's the background in terms of the scripture's interpretation? So on Tuesday, we have Father Andy talking about the conflict in the Middle East. On Wednesday, we have Father Anthony talking about the readings. Two great opportunities. So if you're anywhere within striking distance of Our Lady of Lourdes, please know you are very welcome here. What I also mentioned, I just went through the mail today, and I got a letter from Vinny Vignardi and his wife Susie out in Kansas, and a letter from Margaret Socolo in beautiful Poughkeepsie, New York. And they both had things to say about how they enjoyed the Mass, which is wonderful, but they also didn't just have love letters here, they also make a regular contribution to Our Lady of Lourdes. And you know I don't ask a lot, but I, I'm reminded by Vinny and Margaret and Susie that there are people who've been continuously for over three years now supporting us and helping us to get the Mass online. So if you'd like to and you enjoy the Mass, please think about contributing something to Our Lady of Lourdes Parish and helping us out. Uh, you know, inflation strikes everybody, including parishes, and things are more costly than ever, and we could use your help. So that's my rare financial pitch, and I, I ask you to do what you can. And then the other thing I want to tell you about, obviously, is personally speaking with Monsignor Jim Lasanti, you really should listen to some of these interviews. They're so good, uh, whether you do it on Sirius XM, the Catholic Channel, or you decide just to go to your computer and punch in YouTube and punch in personally speaking with Monsignor Jim Lasanti. This week, Robbie Benson, great actor, you'll know him right away. Many movies, uh, and if you ever saw Beauty and the Beast, which I'm sure your children and grandchildren love, he plays the beast in that. But he also has wonderful things to say about the secret of a successful over 40 year marriage to Carla and raising children and giving them values that last. So that's Robbie Benson this week. And next week, Julie Chen Moonves. Um, she's written this great new book called But First God. Most of you know her because she's been on TV forever as a journalist and the Big Brother series. Uh, but more importantly, she's decided that everything else, all that success in her life means nothing unless she has her priorities straight. And so she's written this book, But First God, going right back to what we're saying in the reading. So Julie Chen Moonves is our guest next week. Good interviews, both of them, and join us on Personally Speaking. My friends, let's pray. Lord and God, may this Holy Eucharist help us to remain faithful to you and to do the will of your Son, and may it teach us the way it leads for us to eternal life. We ask you to grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. With your and may Almighty God bless you and your families in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Amen. Thanks be to God. Oh.